Elon Musk recently released some information on Tesla's long-term plans for battery production. Surprisingly, no one seems to have picked up on the fact that this is part of Tesla's master plan part three, and it's actually way more significant than what people realize. In fact, it's a next level chess move that other people just haven't seen coming. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to have you here. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. If you've just stumbled upon the channel recently, we have made more than a thousand videos over the past, I think, nine or 10 months. So make sure you check out some of those. They'll give you a good idea on what's happening in the global car industry. Things are changing very, very quickly. Remember when Nokia was the world's largest mobile phone company? And now Nokia is just some tiny little niche player. That's what's happening now to companies like Toyota. Yep, it hasn't quite happened yet, but it certainly will very shortly. Now, what's happening at Tesla is, well, Tesla essentially are going to become the next Toyota. That's the first time I've said this on that. That's the first time I've made this claim on this channel. I'm predicting that by 2030, Toyota's vehicle sales will have at best halved from 10 million to 5 million at best. That's best case scenario for Toyota. Worst case scenario for Tesla is that they sell what Toyota is now, 10 million vehicles per year. Best case scenario for Tesla in 2030, that number is 20 million. You probably think I'm mad. If you haven't been watching this channel, probably think that's insane, right? Well, Tesla actually have a plan. The point is having a plan. The, then the second point is actually delivering on that plan. So this is a part of Tesla's plan to enable the company to actually achieve those 20 million. Clearly, Musk is thinking long-term here, 10 years down the road, eight years, 10 years down the road. How do we get to that point? How many tons of materials do we need? How, many, how much of this material can we mine? So here is the kind of explanation. You can see the inner workings of his mind here. So Musk announced that Tesla sees potential in battery chemistry with a manganese-based cathode. There's a key reason why manganese is part of solving Tesla's supply chain issues. He reiterated that the industry needs to focus more on the battery supply chain down to the mineral level, right? During a speech to Tesla's Gigafactory Berlin employees only a couple of days ago, following the delivery of their first Tesla Model Y made at the factory, Musk was asked about graphene-based batteries. Like many in the industry, he was skeptical due to the complexity of making graphene en masse. Sure, it could be done in niche vehicles, but making it as a product en masse is difficult. He did say though that Tesla was working on making batteries out of other materials. However, he said that Tesla in the short term would focus on nickel-based chemistries for longer range vehicles and lithium iron phosphate for shorter range vehicles. I think eventually more than 50% of Tesla vehicles, say by 2026, 27, more than 50% will be lithium iron phosphate, well over. In fact, by 2030, my numbers would suggest that at least 75% of all vehicles coming from Tesla will use lithium iron phosphate batteries. Musk did say this as well. I think there's an interesting potential for manganese. If you think about what he's saying here, and you look at the context of this statement, back at Tesla's battery day in 2020, he said it is relatively straightforward to do a cathode that's two thirds nickel and one third manganese, which will allow us to make 50% more cell volume with the same exact amount of nickel. So this is one of the solutions for nickel being astronomically expensive and supply not being big enough, right? At very large scale, we need tens, maybe hundreds of millions of tons of nickel. So the materials used to produce these batteries at a very large scale need to be common materials or you can't scale. So even back in 2020, Musk was thinking, where are we going to be in 2030? How do we get to 20 million? How do we do this? What are the batteries? Where are they coming from? And one of the clear pathways to achieving scale with nickel-based batteries is to make part of that nickel actually manganese. A number of research groups have published papers on promising manganese-rich cathode batteries that could offer options with a higher energy density than iron phosphate and potentially lower price than nickel-rich batteries. Manganese is already used by Tesla in some battery chemistries, but it is not the prominent component of any of them. 
For example, the electric says, NMC chemistry used a lot of manganese, and Tesla has used this chemistry for its power walls before. Nissan has also used a manganese-rich cathode in the original battery of the LEAF. Musk reiterated the need to focus on battery mineral supply to accelerate the transition to electric transport and renewable energy. He actually said that Tesla estimates the world is going to need 300 terawatt hours of battery cell production in order to transition fully to a sustainable world. 300 terawatt hours. That is astronomical. Obviously, EVs are catching on big time. By 2030, I predict that at least 95% of all vehicles sold in the West, at minimum 95% of all vehicles sold in the West will be fully electric. So there will not be a mining industry big enough to support the amount of nickel that would be needed if the West continues to use like NCA and NCM chemistries or batteries using a lot of nickel, which they currently do. China doesn't. China's now moved away from that. They use LFP batteries. One big advantage China has over the rest of the world. Clearly, the mining we currently have in place for copper, lithium, cobalt, manganese, aluminium, nickel, and even phosphate needs to grow massively in order to support where the industry will be in 2030. Now, remember, there's also actually the potential to use manganese in LFP chemistry batteries as well. And Tesla may consider doing that in order to improve the energy density of LFP batteries. That's something the market hasn't really talked much about, but there is a video about that on the limiting factor. I'll put a link in the description below to their channel if you want to check that out. Personally, I'm extremely impressed by the level of innovation that goes on at Tesla. Now, to give you guys some context, Elon has claimed that Tesla will hit 20 million cars per year in 10 years from now. So that would actually be 2032. Can they do that? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.